Well, happy Wednesday, coming Community Church. Hope you're having a great week so far. And wanted to continue our study in Mark's gospel today. And in doing so, I want to rev- answer a question that we get a lot of times, or a struggle that we have. One of the things we talk about in Bible Pathways is the idea of context. The context surrounding the passage influences our understanding of a particular passage or even a particular verse. Um, I, I remember years ago that um, I wanted a passage from the, the, that would tell us to be still and know, to be still before God. And I thought the, the passage from the Psalms that says, be still and know. And as I was looking at that passage, I realized in context, what it actually said was for the nations who are raging against God, to sit down and be quiet because God was about to execute judgment. The context influenced our understanding of the text to where my application didn't make sense of, hey, Christian, slow down, stop your roll, let's just chill, be still, and listen to God. So today we're going to read a verse, a verse that's part of a larger little section we're going to look at here uh, from uh, Mark's Gospel. And in doing so, we're going to see if that particular uh, passage um, is the way that we apply that verse. So uh, Mark chapter 1, verse uh, 35. So we'll read through verse 39, and we'll see if the idea that we read in verse 35 means what it means that we probably understand it to mean. How's that sound? If I can talk on this, uh, this lovely slate summer afternoon. God's word says in Mark's gospel that rising very early in the morning and while it was still dark, he, that's Jesus for context, departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed and Simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Let's pray and then we'll talk about this passage. Lord God, thank you for this text. Help us to understand it in its context so that we might grow closer to you. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay. So that first verse is often used by guys like me, pastors, to say, hey, you need to have a daily quiet time, a daily devotional time. Because it's there that we read, rising very early in the morning, and while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. So you, Christian, need to follow the example of Jesus and go out and and have a quiet place and a time where you can be with God to pray. So my question is, does that verse line up with that in the text? Well, we know that just before that, Jesus had um, taught, they had noted his authority at the end of uh, Mark, or in Mark 1, 27 and 28, and his fame spread. And then he went to Simon Peter's home, right? Simon, Simon, before he became Peter, again, presupposition, um, and Simon's mother-in-law was ill. And so he came and took her by the hand and healed her. And in the evening, all the sick and oppressed were bringing brought to him. And he would not let the demons speak because they knew him. And very early the next morning, before the crowds were out, even up, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. The context is that Jesus... And then, and then we continue, hold on, to, to build my case on context, everyone is looking for you is what he's told when they finally find him. He goes, we need to go on to the next town. Jesus is actively avoiding being made famous and that his fame being used to, to make himself um, well-known or popular in a particular region. The reason that Jesus went out to the desolate place, according to the text while it was still dark, was to avoid the crowds. The reason Jesus did this 
wasn't to get away and go to some place by the lake and 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 be alone so he could pray. It was that he could avoid the crowds so they would not interfere with his mission to take the gospel throughout all the region. And while he was there, he prayed. It's what the text clearly says. Jesus' intent was to avoid becoming so famous that they would thrust the title of Messiah upon him because it was not yet his time. So does that mean that we don't need to have a daily quiet time? No, that's not what this text is saying either. What the text is saying is that when you are doing the Lord's work, you need to be in prayer. You need to be a person who prays consistently and regularly. And in so doing, you'll know what God wants you to do. The reality is, is that this, the prescription for the quiet time isn't a location. It isn't a time of day. It's a heart condition before God. And it's simply this. Will I pray and put myself under the authority of God? That's what this text teaches. In its description, it gives us instruction rather than us thinking that it is, de- it is instructive and prescripting to us telling us how to live. Well, I hope that this finds you well. It's kind of, when I studied this this week, it kind of blew my mind because I've always thought, you know, this is a great text to remind us that we need to have a daily time. And that's not what this text says. So be students of the word, study it, get into it, grind it out. And in doing so, you'll grow closer to Jesus. I hope this finds you well. I'll see you Sunday as we wrap up our series in Romans. Have a great rest of your week coming, church. Love you guys. See you soon. God bless.